but we learn something about whether or not the process converges. That teaches us something as well. So suppose we ask the question once, we get a range of values from 1 to 7. Ask it again, we get a range of values from 2 to 8. Ask it again, we get a range of values from 3 to 7. We're not converging. The fact of non-convergence tells us something about the problem we're trying to estimate. What it tells us is that there's something wrong with it. Either we're also ignorant that we have no clue, which is usually not going to be the case, or there's something about the way the thing that we're estimating has been written that makes it inherently not possible to estimate it. Usually that makes, means there's a mistake, it's really vague, something critical is left out, a bunch of critical things were left out, we're not even sure which ones they are, and so forth. So, it occasionally happens that we will have something that seems straightforward and clear when we start to estimate it, but we can't converge. And that's a clue that there's something wrong with this problem, and we need to toss it out of the session and have whoever wrote it up for us go back and think it over again, and try to figure out why we are missing the, uh, the results and what needs to be done to make it possible for us to estimate these more accurately. So I've talked about two Delphi techniques, the original Delphi, the wideband Delphi, now we're talking about a third one, which is a much more recent origin. It's called the planning poker method. The planning poker method was invented, I think, in the year 2002 by a fellow named Roni. And someone else named Mike Cohn thought it was a great title. Indicated his approval of title by registering as a trademark. Uh, and therefore, we have a trademark notice here at the bottom of the slides, because Malphago Software owns that term. The planning poker method is a fast version of, of wideband Delphi. And like all the Delphi methods, it's useful for any project, although it is particularly well known and more widely used in Agile projects. It's a team based process, just like the others. Its purpose is to find something good enough fast. Once again, we're looking for good enough quickly rather than superb someday. And we use cards to show our estimates, our estimate numbers and our values. The advantage of cards is that while well, they're not truly anonymous, we do nevertheless have the ability with them to prevent angering. So that we'll ask people what they think, we'll ask them to pick a, a card that has a number if they want but not show it. Then we ask them all to show their cards at the same time. We'll show what they thought of, and it's too late for them to change their minds to match who they think of as the expert. I'm going to need to pause the video for a second. It's fun because I forgot to bring the cards in. So. <laughs> 